The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got a mixed calm market so far to kick things off. we got some equities moving with earnings this morning. We have the S&Ps up by one point right now, trading at 56.11. NASDAQ 100, we got some tech earnings on tap. This week, we got the main event really next week, but nonetheless, they kick it off this week. You got 300 of the Russell 2000 equities reporting their earnings this week as well. So we're in full swing in earnings season. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 18 points, trading at 19,983. Quite the two way market we saw yesterday in all the markets. You had the Dow up 12 points, 40,705. And just look at the moves, right? In the Dow. 200 points down, 200 points up, 200 points down towards the end of the day. Pretty remarkable. You jump over the S&Ps, the swings you had going on. You're talking about what? About 30 points from 46.05 down to 46.75 most, back up to 46.05, and then you finish the session near the lows yesterday before you – no, I'm sorry, and then back up. Yeah, that was middle of the day, then back up. So quite a double top double low and you make it back up there and we're just kind of floating right around that area towards the end of the day positive markets yesterday russell and you see the divergence right you don't have two moves in the russell you had one big move in the morning and then you get it back and then we're above that area through the afternoon session and we're kind of right back to where we were but the russell off by four tenths percent today bitcoin off by 1800 bucks. You were up to 68,000 change yesterday. You're trading at 66,475. Maybe everybody is selling their Ethereum, buying some, excuse me, selling their Bitcoin, buying some Ethereum, as all the talk is Ethereum ETFs coming down the line as they get approved and they will be mean, mainstream in some time. Ethereum above 3,500. Crude continuing to struggle with a 77.64 price point. We're coming into the lows we had yesterday in crude right now. You check out the daily on crude, quite a pullback. And on a Fibonacci level, let's see where we are right now. Yeah, the 618 coming in at about $77.11. That's correlating to some of the lows you had in the better part of May. And yeah, low prices coming at you in crude. We were just trading at 84 bucks just like that. You're at $77 for the price of crude. Gold contract right now up by $13 at $24.08. That's your daily. You jump back to a 15 minute on gold. And there's your action on gold. Overnight, you were at about $23.89. You catch quite a bit from the overnight session. From about 2, 3 in the morning, you're up $20 from that low, sitting at $24.08 on gold. We keep our eye on notes and bonds. You got a little bit of higher price and lower yield. Quite the drop yesterday. You dive down to 110.18. We're about 10 ticks above that price level right now. The 10-year has a yield right now of about 4.23%. The Fed begins their meeting one week from today, and they'll make their announcement one week from tomorrow, July 31st. All the focus is going to be on what they say coming down the line for their July meeting. And then Friday, we get their preferred inflation gauge, the PCE. So all eyes will be on that on Friday as well. We jump over to the dollar index, DXY. Dollar, getting some strength this morning, 104.47. Interesting, you got gold up with dollar strength, 104.47 for the dollar index this morning. All right. Where do we kick things off? Well, let's talk about a little airlines. It is interesting. One re reverberation. Delta faces U.S. investigation over the handling of the system outage. So, Mayor Pete says the carrier must follow the law, take care of customers. Cancellations grow for Delta after Friday's meltdown. So now it's kind of going from just the cancellations, from Microsoft's problem, from CrowdStrike. And we're going to go to CrowdStrike next. They get some problems as well. Uh but they are now under investigation over its handling of the glitch that has led to thousands of canceled flight. They've opened a probe to ensure the airline is following the law and taking care of its passengers in terms of are people getting the 
rebates, the refunds, et cetera, that they're supposed to. And that is adding to the strain that Delta is facing already with all the cancellations. And there's Delta. You're going to be basically flat. But yeah, it was quite a trade lower yesterday as you were lower from about 45.50 down to a close yesterday of 43.83 for Delta. Microsoft, not the case. Microsoft seems like a uh, it's shifted to it's not their problem, it's CrowdStrike's problem because check out CrowdStrike, man. CrowdStrike yesterday trades from 300 and change as of the close of Friday. You close at 263.91. You are going to catch a little bit of a bid. You're up by $6. They're talking about CrowdStrike in the den the past couple of days, rightfully so, saying, man, is this maybe the buy? One of the comments I like seeing out there, one of the I mean, it's probably a tail risk, but are they going to face some lawsuits over this? Very, very potentially. All right. But it is remarkable. If you liked CrowdStrike at 398, you're going to love it at 263, right? A little bit sarcastic. A lot sarcastic out there. But, yeah, you're talking about you were just trading at 400 bucks, and just like that, you're off more than 30% on this equity in what? What was that? That was July 9th. Two weeks. Just like that. 11 days. Right? What? How many trading days is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trading days from almost four hundred dollars to two sixty three. Diversification, always a big factor. And where are we coming down to? Maybe the highs of two thousand twenty two. Oh man. This thing just went from ninety two bucks up to four hundred. Let's take that off there. And let's see what kind of a retracement levels we're dealing with with this. Yeah, we're through the 382. 50% is about 245. And the 618 brings you back down to 209. Nothing stopping this thing from just dropping to 200 like a rock, man. Pretty remarkable. All right. In other news, in talking about cybersecurity, Wiz. Seems like maybe this would be a good time to capitalize off that, right? They're saying, no, we're not going to Google, man. We're going to go IPO. They reject Google's offer for $23 billion. Pretty remarkable. Google was trying to get into that business, catch up with Microsoft and Amazon in that competitive cloud service market. And, yeah, they're going to just say, no, thank you, and we're going to IPO. So Google, which bought cybersecurity firm Mandiant for $5.4 billion just two years ago, that was their second largest acquisition. They could have used Wiz to turn around its security offerings, was kind of the gist here. And the New York-based startup connects to cloud storage providers such as Amazon and Azure, Microsoft, and scans data stored there for security risks. And yeah, um, they say no. Wiz decided it could ultimately be worth more as a public company, and concerns about the potential for a protracted regulatory approval process also encouraged it to stay independent. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Alphabet also recently shelved its pursuit of HubSpot, a customer relation management software maker. That deal could have attracted regulatory scrutiny as well. Yeah, these tech companies, they're worried right now that they got too much of a stronghold and they should be. I mean, you see the impact, right? You see the impact that Microsoft just had. You see the impact. One company, CrowdStrike, with one line of security um, for Microsoft had as it shuts down everything, the whole globe. Pretty remarkable. But yeah, Google is trying to build up those capabilities in cybersecurity as a key prong of its strategy to gain market share in cloud computing, where it trails Amazon and Microsoft. So where are they going to next? I bet they're going to try and go somewhere next, man. Because they're behind and they're trying to play catch up. And can't be easy trying to catch up with the likes of Microsoft and Amazon. Google flat on the session. Stay tuned, folks. We have a lot to talk about. We'll talk some earnings when we get back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets all in the red right now, barely in the red, though. S&P's off by 2, NASDAQ off by 28, Dow off by 19, and the Russell off by about half a percent, the Russell. Not Spotify, not in the world of streaming. Spotify, going to catch a bid to the tune of, what is that right now, $42 to the upside, man? You're talking about a pop of what, 14% almost to the upside? Take a look at this thing, man. Spotify, they beat in pretty dramatic fashion. I mean, pretty remarkable. A year ago, you're trading at 129. You're going to open at 339. We put this on a weekly. You were sitting right at the highs of 2021. Is that the high? 387 is the high. Okay, going all the way back to the beginning of 2021. You're going to open this morning at... Okay, so you're just testing where we just were last month. Yeah, check that out. 33108, and you're open at 337. We're going to be above that price point. We got a slight high over that price level. But yeah, they got some strong growth over at Spotify, man. Some of those numbers over there. So year-over-year -year increase to $3.8 billion, 
excuse me, 29.2% gross margin. I mean, that's when, when you're selling airwaves, right? Pretty remarkable. 246 million subscribers. That's a 12% jump from the previous year. Record high operating income of 266 million is what they come in with. Uh, excuse me. No, that's uh, 266 pounds, I guess, the article I'm reading over here. Significant free cash flow of almost half a billion dollars. Yeah, the market likes that. Half a billion pounds, excuse me. Strong growth and record profits for Q2 for Spotify, and they're going to catch a dramatic bid on the open. All right, let's go back to some of our equities over here. Comcast. Mixed results weighed down by Film Studio and Theme Parks. You check out Comcast on their numbers, CMCSA. And they're basically flat, but they've been jumping around. Yeah, you're at about $40. You traded at thirty nine fifty three. You come out with the numbers, and we're jumping around in both directions. Usually, this is indicative of earnings calls. I'm not sure if they had two going on or what's going on over there this morning. But nonetheless, Comcast, you're going to be slightly in the positive, And you get back to their numbers. Earnings of a buck twenty one versus a buck twelve. Revenue though is a miss. Yeah. Peacock continued to make gains. It's interesting, I was telling you. So I'm a subscriber of Peacock. If you're out there and thinking about signing up for Peacock folks, now I saw something that they just raised their price from something like fifty nine dollars a year to seventy nine dollars a year. I was able to find a coupon code for 50% off your first year. So I got Peacock for thirty dollars for the year. I got it for the Kentucky Derby. And I said to myself, okay, I get it for the Kentucky Derby. I wanted to watch a couple movies they had on there anyway. And then I'm going to be able to watch football season, NFL on NBC on there. And I, you know, I said to myself, geez, I can't believe they're letting me watch all this programming for $30, but they aren't. I should be thanking them for letting me, for letting them serve me ads. And that is where the business is going. We saw it with Netflix. Netflix isn't even going to be telling you the amount of subscribers they have coming next year because all they're going to tell you is revenue because it's all going to come from advertising growth, right? If it was going to come from subscriber growth, they would continue to tell you those numbers. They figured out subscriber growth is going to be very hard going forward. They're going to focus on revenue growth. That's going to come from advertising, and you're going to see it in the same way. I mean, the whole business is going back to what it was originally. I mean, it all goes back to what you can make – off of consumers versus what you can make off of the eyeballs and selling advertising, right? Imagine if Facebook charged money to use their service, which is versus what they make per user for advertising. It doesn't even compare. And these companies are all figuring it out. So not surprising that Peacock is going to go the model that they let everybody in on the cheap and then they sell you advertising. But revenue dropped 3% to $29.69 billion for Comcast over there. Revenue from the content and experience segment, which includes universal TV business, theme parks, and pictures, down 7.5%. Yeah. They lost customers in some of the key units. The losses weren't as deep as feared, though, is how they put it out there. It lost 120,000 broadband customers, 110,000 of those residential and they were looking for maybe losing 142000 Yeah, that business is over, man. It's remarkable. I was saying, you know, I don't have cable TV, folks. I have internet, of course. I have a bunch of streaming platforms that go with it. I mean, we have almost all of them, right? You think about it. I got Netflix. I got Prime TV. I have Paramount. I got Peacock. I got, um, what else do I have in there? That's not. Oh, and Max is the other big one. And the cool part about Max is when I want news, when I want live news, which is what TV was great for, I got CNN on Max. So don't discount how that is kind of cool because there are times when you're used to that cable TV deal, right? When Biden stepped down, I wanted some live breaking live news. I went to CNN. Now, the other thing I have, though, is I have a Bloomberg subscription, and you can watch Bloomberg Live TV, and I don't even know if that's free. I don't think it's free on theirs, on their, I should know that, though. Is it free? Maybe somebody can tell me in the den. Can you watch Bloomberg's live television on their, I'll figure that one out, as to whether you can actually watch their live television free, and it's kind of a similar deal, right? They want to sell you the ads in the same way, um, but I do enjoy that. I watch Bloomberg 
all the time in my office. I can pull them up on the television as well, but that's because I subscribe to Bloomberg as a subscriber there for their content, which I think is almost top notch in the business. It's them, Wall Street Journal out there as well, New York Times business out there occasionally. Um, but Bloomberg and Wall Street Journal, man, tops of the top, I would say for sure. All right, nonetheless, so they got Comcast chopping around. Some of the other equities, well, we got to go to UPS, man. They are diving this morning. Slide on the earnings miss and a guidance cut. So, revenue guidance, $93 billion for the year, missing by 94.5. Now, they're going to shave off about $500 million of CapEx in here, but that's not going to save things. Yeah, for capital expenditures, they're going to spend $4 billion versus $4.5, but that doesn't make up for losing $1.5 billion from what the market was expecting they were going to take in for revenue for the year. They noted the guidance does not include the impacts of the recently announced sale of its trucking business. Okay, but nonetheless, they miss across the board. Earnings, a buck seventy nine in the current quarter versus a buck ninety nine. Revenue twenty one point eight versus twenty two point one eight. And I just told you that they shaved one point five billion off the revenue expectations for the two thousand twenty four year. Net income one point four one billion or buck sixty five a share compared with two point zero eight or two forty two a share a year earlier talk a little bit more about that as logistics a problem the slowdown check it out man they're down 10 percent in the pre-market 145 to 130 stay tuned folks we're coming back for the opening bell we're going to talk a little gm we'll talk some tests as well don't go away the consistency you're looking for is closer than you think one or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July July 26, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S and P's basically flat right now. Nasdaq 100 off by 34. We check in on some of those tech stocks. Apple shares off by three tenths percent right now. We jump over to Google as they miss the mark for Wiz. They don't get it done. They're positive by three tenths percent right now. You jump over to Meta shares. Meta. There you go, up by 1.2% right now. Microsoft shares up by 2 tenths percent right now. We jump over to Amazon shares up by 7 tenths percent right now. Interesting article on the journal here talking about Amazon. So Prime Day, one of the best deals out there, folks. If you're ever looking for a deal on one of these Prime Days, it's always the Amazon products, right? Because that's a great way for them to drive revenue. It's their own product. They drive revenue. Not sure they're making much money off of those products, and this is a great article that alludes to some of what they're talking about here in terms of Alexa is in millions of households and Amazon is losing billions. Now I'll tell you, anecdotal, but I bought two Echo devices on Prime Day and that was, there was a deal and a half. I got two of them because I wanted one in Tommy's bedroom and I wanted one out in the living room or maybe in my bedroom, right? One in Tommy's bedroom so he could play with it, a kid's one. I got an Echo Pop. They got, they got dots and they got pops now. Okay, and they, they had a Marvel pop, which had Iron Man, the Hulk on there, um, Black Panther, and somebody else. I think I even have it in my room somewhere. Who else is on there? Uh, Captain America. Yeah, I just looked at it. Uh, he had brought it in here yesterday when we played in the afternoon. And the interesting part is that, so he has a kid's tablet, okay? And I'm telling you, the tablet is a heck of a deal, man. The tablet, the thing that sold it, me on the tablet originally is that it comes with like a two-year guarantee if they break it they'll replace it and it's got padding on the outside and for kids and listen screen time keep it to a minimum okay i'm super aware of that but there is such a good thing as good screen time for kids right there is you know apps that help him develop his writing reading mathematics colors alphabet all that type of stuff okay with some fun mixed in playing some games as well age appropriate but what's interesting is he pays for what's called Kids Plus, which I think is like five ninety nine a month, if I'm correct. Okay, you get it free for a year, I think, when you buy the tablet, and then you got to pay for it five ninety nine a month. Now, when you buy this Echo Dot and the Echo Pop, the Echo Dot came with a free year of it, and the Echo Pop came with a free six months of it. That alone saved me like thirty dollars because I was already paying for the product, which is interesting when you put it in that perspective. Now. What they look at here is that people are not spending money with these products. They're not. They have a metric called DSI, which is downstream impact, okay? So Amazon launched the Echo smart home device with its Alexa voice assistant in 2014. I mean, remember all the talk that how did Amazon upend Siri and become the voice assistant in everybody's home when Apple had the gecko and the advantage, okay? But they, as the article says, they were trying to pull the page from the shaving giant Gillette's classic playbook, right? They sell the razors at a loss or a pittance, as they put it. So they sell the devices at a loss, and then you make money on purchases downstream. And a decade later, that has not happened. They've lost, check it out, between 2017 and 2021, Amazon had more than $25 billion in losses from its devices business. Now, not that big of a deal for that type of a company, but how do you fix that? What's going on there, man? The high stakes miscalculation made under founder Bezos, the current CEO Jazzy is now trying to change. As part of the plan to reverse the losses, Amazon is launching a paid tier of Alexa. As soon as this month, a move even some engineers working on the project worry won't work. I'll tell you folks, I'm an Amazon lover, okay? I wish I had bought every piece of that stock I could have when I figured out really early on, I was one of, you know, super early in Prime. I figured out this is a phenomenal deal on Prime, man. Back in the day where you had to pay for two to three day delivery, it was a phenomenal deal to sign up for Prime for like $79 for the year at that time when people were paying $20 per delivery online, right? But the last thing I want to do is start signing up for a bunch of services for us to use these Alexa, Alexa devices in the house. I don't even sign up for Amazon Music. Not into that. I'll use the free music that they provide, okay? Because I already pay for Sirius in my car. 
you know, you really want to keep track of those services that you don't use and you're paying for on a monthly basis. And I don't see myself signing up for that at all. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. Now, they talk about here DSI, okay? As Jazzy tries to fix this, he's rethinking the obscure Bezos era metric inside Amazon that helps explain why Echo and other devices could accrue such huge losses for so long with little repercussion called downstream impact or DSI. It assigns a financial value to a product or service based on how customers spend within Amazon's ecosystem after they buy it. Now, this has worked well for them for the Kindle, okay? One of the most profitable devices. They're very likely to buy ebooks once you buy the Kindle. That's very different from something like the Alexa, okay? And they talk about in here that, you know, people use the Alexa for very simple things. Maybe a timer, right? Tell me the weather, tell me the time, um, those types of things. I don't think that you're going to start paying a lot of money for that capability unless it really transforms how you're living everyday life. And I don't think that's happening right now. Um, some Amazon devices can count on direct revenue, such as by selling users subscriptions. More than half of the customers who buy doorbells from Ring, another profitable device, purchase security sub sub subscriptions. Right. More than half. Think about that. Pretty interesting. In other cases, Echo devices. Yeah. The downstream impact idea broke down. Now, they developed this with a bunch of economists, one of them, a Nobel Prize winner. They talked about a team in 2011. Economists, including an eventual Nobel Prize winner, developed that downstream impact idea. And yeah, for things like the Kindle, I guess it works. But guess what? It doesn't work there, man. Echo and other devices are sold at or below cost to make them. And uh, yeah, that's just not happening, man. As people are just not spending money. The team relied heavily on the metric DSI to justify costs related. And um, they had 15,000 employees at one point across all their products. So they got an issue there, man. wonder how Jazzy is going to shape that one up, but they got an issue for sure. Other downstream impact revenue that helped Echo devices look financially better on paper came from Amazon Music. Yeah, look at this. Is, I'm not the only one, right? No, I'm not signing up for Amazon Music at 10 bucks a month, man. It's not worth it. I just don't use it that much for to warrant $120 for the year at this point. The devices team also claimed the piece a piece of shopping revenue because people can use the Alexa to order goods. I've never used the Alexa to order goods. It's one thing shopping on mobile, very comfortable on that, but I'm not shopping over my Amazon Alexa device, man. Not even happening. Yeah, so interesting how it happens. $25 billion they've lost from, from 2017 to 2011. We'll see if they can transform that business. And there he is, the Echo input. So now they got the dot. They got the pop. We got an echo pop. Yeah. In 2018, they lost more than $5 billion. That is quite a price tag, man. And they're taking a look at profitability. Amazon. Check that out, though. On a negative day, they're up by 1.7%. Check out Microsoft, up by 3 tenths percent. The big dog, Apple, slightly in the red this morning. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll talk some Coca-Cola. Oh, up 1.5% on their numbers. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got Coca-Cola up by 1.5% on their numbers. So they beat on the top and the bottom line. They beat on full-year um, guidance. Excuse me. They beat on full-year guidance for organic revenue. And Coca-Cola, 84 cents a share in adjusted earnings per share on $12.36 billion. Uh, they beat across the top and the bottom line. Analysts were looking for 81 cents on 11.76 billion. So they come in 84 cents versus 81 expected. They come in 12.36 billion versus 11.76 expected. And they raise their full year guidance for organic revenue. And the market likes that. You're up by 1.6%. And that's a decent move for Coca-Cola. Not exactly a high growth tech company on multiples that you're going to see huge moves. But man, it is quite a run from those lows back in October of $51. You're pushing 55.87 right now. And yeah, making recent highs. And you're coming back to these highs that we saw for Coca-Cola in April of 2022, only about a buck, off, buck 20 off of that price level. Look at that, coming into the all-time highs for Coca-Cola at 65.89 this morning. All right, and what else we got going on, folks? We got a few things going on, man. How about it? So, first of all, Tiger Dollar Sale. Running through this month, you can get a 20, 30, or 40% bonus on your purchase if you're thinking about signing up for anything. What do we got? We got our man Basil Chapman coming up tonight. 90-minute webinar for the opening call. Sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. Folks, I'm sure if you're listening to this program, you've heard Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, which comes up next. He's coming up in 15, excuse me, in 15 minutes right now. If you've never attended one of his webinars, he is an outstanding educator, okay? Check out the opening call. You sign up. You get a month in the newsletter. You gain access to the 90-minute webinar that's tonight. It'll be archived if you can't attend it all tonight from 4 till 5.30, okay? You gain access to a plethora of archived webinars before that. And if you're new to it, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So get in there. You get some Tiger Dollars. You get the opening call webinar. And I'm looking forward to that at 4 o'clock tonight. Sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. 90 minutes in there with Basil. And, yeah, my dad talking about he was on the program with Jacob last night. This will be a good one. Not this Friday, but next Friday, August 2nd. Live trading event, 9 a.m. till 12 noon Eastern time. He'll be in there live trading. Okay, he's going to be trading the S&P futures, the NASDAQ 100 futures. 
the SPY and the QQQ, the ETFs that coordinate to those futures as well. And then he's going to be in there. And listen, I've been talking to him about these zero day to expiration options. He loves them. He's going to be in there trading them. I know some people in the den love them. They've been around for a while. Um, but he's jazzed for that one, man. So check that out. $295. You get his newsletter from a month, $169 value. You get his book. Signed, mailed to you. That's an $88 value. If you're a current Market Insights subscriber out there, you get your next month for free. Okay, so that value is locked in as well. Check that out, and that will be archived as well. So you want to go over it a few times, and that is the Friday, August 2nd, which is cool, which is going to be following the Fed meeting on July 31st. So you get the Fed meeting on the 31st, August 1st on the 1st, and then you get the 2nd that Friday coming up for that live trading event. All of it, take advantage of those Tiger Dollars, folks, as that is running through the month as well. And I encourage, as I said, check out Basil's webinar, folks. All right, sign up for the opening call. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. What are you doing at 4 o'clock today? I hope you're going to be in there with our man Basil talking about the sectors and stocks to focus on. I wonder if he's going to have to, anything to say about rotation. There it is. Will sector rotation see new groups rally? He's always talking about it. And, boy, it has been in focus recently, right? That Russell I was talking about on my program yesterday. The Russell, if you didn't hear the program yesterday, folks, the Russell, okay, yesterday, there was a period of time, it was like a seven-day period, all right, and it was <laughs> it was this seven-day period, right, I can pick it out on the chart, it was probably one, two, three, four, five, six, these six days when you have the Russell 2000, trade from 2050 on July 10th up to 2304, it outperformed the S&P Okay, because check out the S&P. There's the 10th on the S&P. Now, yeah, you got a little bit of a pop, but it outperformed the S&P to a level that the market had not seen since 1986. 38 years. It had a period of time, a seven-day trading period, where the Russell outperformed the S&P that had not been seen in 38 years. Why is that? Well, there's a few factors going on there, right? Few factors indeed. We got earnings, we got tech stocks, we got rotation, we have presidential race coming up, the Trump trade, so forth. And then you have the Fed that's on course to probably begin cutting in September. And where do they go from there? Well, we'll find out, but interesting nonetheless. All right, we jump over to Coca Cola, as I mentioned. Coke up by 1.4%. Yeah. Let's see how they're trading. They're up by 1.4. We check in on some of the other equities with their numbers. Spotify holding on to those gains up by 13% this morning. We jump over to GM. Ooh, not so much. GM down by 5.4% so far this morning. Yeah, how about NXP? Is it NXPI? What is it? Yeah, NXPI. They were talking about this in the den last night as they dropped off right on the close on their numbers. They're off by 6.5% on their numbers. UPS, yeah, that's a tough one, man. 11.3% as they had a big miss in a big way. Check that out, man. So you got the, Ether the Ethereum ETFs begin trading today. Let's check them out. Bitcoin, down $2,000 in Ethereum. Ooh, they drop on the open as well. Interesting. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Yeah. You got BlackRock, you got Grayscale. And what always happens here is they forego the fees at the beginning of this, right? So Ether ETFs officially begin trading in the U.S. today. Yeah, I'll pull the headline over there. Putting the world's second largest cryptocurrency in a vehicle favored by many professional investors and advisors. Well, I'd say even favored by many retail as well. Yeah, so you got BlackRock. You got everybody out here, man. You got Vanguard. You got Fidelity. I was listening to the list this morning, listening to Bloomberg. Okay, and there they are. New Ether ETFs. Grayscale gets the uh, the golden symbol, I'd say. ETH. And they are all waiving the fees. But look at this. Post waiver. Look how small the fees are, man. Look at that. 0.15%. Franklin. Van Eck. Bitwise. Fidelity, Invesco, they're all out there. Who's going to rise to the top? Yeah, and this thing's been on a tear, man. You back this up. Look at the run these things have had over the last year. Look at this. <laughs> look at this, man. In October, you were at 1500 bucks. You were at 35. Absolutely remarkable. Bitcoin, you were at 26000 You're at 66. 
Absolutely remarkable. And these markets catch a bid. s and is now up by 9 points. NASDAQ 100 up by 23. Let's see how Microsoft's trading out there. Up by 8 tenths percent. Amazon was catching a bid on the open. Look at Amazon up by 2.3% to kick things off right now. Apple shares up by 2 tenths percent. Check out CrowdStrike. A little bit of a bid. You check out Tesla shares this morning. Down about 3 tenths percent so far for Tesla shares. All right. All right, folks. Stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll take a look at... There's your dollar charging higher, man. Interesting. You get the dollar, excuse me, up by 20 pennies at 104.51. And even with the dollar stronger, you got gold holding well. Up by $8 this morning. We jump over to crude. Crude. Breaking the lows of yesterday. We might get a 76 handle by the end of the show. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Check out that Basil Chapman webinar. He's live at 4 o'clock today, right on the front page of TFNL. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. The market reverberating. We were positive by 10. We're back to flat right now. You see the drop off. Those are five minute bars in the S&P. We're up to 5620. We're back to 5612. And if you're thinking about attending that live trading session going on with my dad next Friday, August 2nd, uh, one of the things he's going to be talking about is how to trade that opening bell. All right. He loves trading the opening bell. There's a reason why he's going to be in there at nine o'clock, setting up the trades, getting ready for 930, showing you how to best prepare to execute those trades at 930 and then trading throughout the morning up until 12 o'clock. I encourage you to check it out, folks, because, you know, sometimes the morning 
you're right. We got one rip rally in the morning. You might get one near the close. Middle of the day, yeah, we get some moves for sure. But there's nothing like that opening bell sometimes in terms of how this market moves. And you're seeing it right now as we just traded from 5608 up 12 points, down 10 points just like that. And we're only 25 minutes into the trading day. NASDAQ 100 slightly in the red. And, yeah, you got to keep our eye on some of these tech stocks, man. It is interesting, the moves we're getting. Look at Meta. Meta just gave back 6 bucks like that, man. Up to 494 back to 489 right now. You check in on Amazon. Whew, what's going on on Amazon shares, man? Oh, are they liking the fact that Google isn't going to be competing with the uh, cloud services? Maybe. Yeah, nonetheless, Amazon up by 2.9%. That is a move. $5 to the upside for Amazon shares. Alphabet, uh, excuse me, Apple, uh, basically flat. And we check out Google on that deal. Well, they're saving $23 billion is one way to look at it. They're up by 7 tenths percent. Markets back in the positive. Dow barely in the red this morning. We check in on some of those companies with their earnings. Comcast down about 5%. Look at those moves, right? Down by 5% right now. Check out Tesla shares down by about 7 tenths percent right now. Whew, moves across the board. All right. And how about crude? We're going to get that 676 handle? Not just yet. $77. We check in on gold, even with a strong dollar. Gold up about $6 right now at 2400 on the dot. All right, folks. Don't forget, Tiger Dollar Sale running through this month. And I encourage you, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Don't miss the Tiger Technicians Hour. He's going to be coming up with the top of the hour breakdown right at 10 o'clock. you got a few minutes until then. Head on over to the front page. Sign up for the opening call. You'll be in there for 90 minutes talking about sectors and stocks for this next Next market phase coming up tonight. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one, folks.